magic cape, a talking hat, a boot, or a carpet to travel on, a ring of power, silver slippers, just click your heels, Dorothy. Our stories and movies are full of devices that transform the wearer, help her to see the world differently, and to accomplish seemingly extraordinary things. In real life, we find these magical accessories sadly missing. How I wish I had a ring or cloak that made me invisible or slippers that took me wherever I wanted to go. Actually, I do have one. I discovered a port key, the Harry Potter term for something like an old boot that if you held onto it, you were transported in a whoosh to another place. I discovered a device that showed me a new way of being and seeing, and I haven't stopped talking about it since. My podcast series is about using not an old boot, but a construct to help you see your life in a different way, a way that could be viewed as magical. The construct, the heroine's journey, is an archetype, a pattern that has appeared in stories, in literature, in all times and across all cultures. As Joseph Campbell explained, quote, a basic motif of the universal hero's journey, leaving one condition and finding the source of life to bring you forth into a richer or mature condition. It's the motif of our growth and development as humans, what gets us higher and higher up on the spiral of self-actualization. I will share about the heroine's journey in my episodes, but also interview who I call real life heroines, so you can see how this ancient pattern can be seen in their lives, in the callings they receive, and what occurs because they answer them. Campbell studied the myths and legends of the world. He called the myth he found everywhere, the myth of the hero, a monument because of its wide distribution around the world and across all time. This archetypal motif is what we're going to use as our magical device in this course. I am inviting you as you listen to place your life into the common signposts of the journey and see you and your life or situation through a new lens. You will find it transformative. The word heroine may bring up different pictures in your mind. It may make you think of a female leading character in a book. Much worse, it may make you think of the drug heroine, which doesn't have an E on the end of it like our word heroine has. Here's my definition of heroine as I use it in this podcast. A heroine is totally and fully herself in accepting and loving of herself. She takes the heroine's journey to reclaim who she really is as a person, who she is meant to be, not some version of herself that she presents to others to make them happy. She is herself, genuine and authentic, she answers a call and leaves her comfort zone and goes on an adventure. This is what evolves her. The heroine's journey is the transporting mechanism that helps us realize our own true self. We never really lost her. It's more a process of uncovering her, dispensing of the layers that we used to be less vulnerable and seemingly safe and acceptable. The journey is our own magic carpet. As Joseph Campbell detailed for us, there are several signposts that are similar in all the stories he studied. But here's the thing. These milestones are not just buried in stories. They are very alive in our own lives, and we move through them every day. That is the basis of my teachings. In my book, You Are a Heroine, A Retelling of the Hero's Journey. In my online course, Your Epic Journey of Transformation, and in all that I write and speak about, I want you to know you are living the heroine's journey, and you undoubtedly are a heroine. Now, to prove it to you, 
in these exciting and illuminating podcast episodes. Here are the signposts and their definitions as I'll refer to them. The titles come from the titles Joseph Campbell gave them. He has several more milestones and defines them in his classic work, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. The first, ordinary life. The heroine is going about her usual business. This is the context, home base, and background of the heroine. Who is she? What's going on with her? What does she do? Where does she live? What does she look like? What's her current comfort zone where she feels safe? The call. Something occurs to take her out of that ordinary situation. It may be something external like a natural disaster, or it may be an inner urge to go somewhere and do something different. There are many internal and external incidents that push us out of our old patterns, ruts, and routines. Refusal of the call. The heroine can answer her call or refuse it. Usually, if she refuses the call, which happens a lot, the call gets louder and more insistent. Think of a wake-up call, which can be most unpleasant. Crossing the threshold. When the heroine can no longer refuse the call, she responds. It can be a small step or a big jump. The heroine can hover around the threshold for a long time. But when she takes that step, which can often seem like a big leap, then she's moving into the unknown, into new territory, into an adventure. The belly of the whale. On the road, there can be all kinds of trials with false starts, failures, and successes. It can be like a maze. When the heroine experiences lots of turmoil, then she's in the belly of the whale. She's being shaken up and tossed around, which ultimately aids the heroine as she's being born anew. This is about shaking off old limiting beliefs about herself and unfolding into a more expansive version of herself. Dragons. There are deep-seated and challenging beliefs or baggage that the heroine has been carrying around for most of her life. She thinks they are part of her. They're not. They are dragons, old beliefs that rise to the surface during a journey in order to be healed and released. Gifts received. At the end of this particular journey, we go on many in our lifetimes, in all areas of our lives. There is a time the heroine looks back and realizes the gifts she's received. Gifts could be a new level of awareness or skill, more confidence, spiritual growth, financial achievement, whatever the heroine needed to learn this time around the journey cycle. The return threshold. Now the heroine returns home to her community to share the gifts she's received. These gifts can help everyone in her circle and beyond. The journey is a personal experience, but this expansion of herself also improves society. Freedom to live. The heroine has released, healed, or integrated some aspect of herself, a belief, relationship, assumption, or misperception that has kept her from becoming her true self. She now has the freedom to be who she really is. This is the ultimate goal of the heroine's journey, to urge, challenge, and push each woman into realizing her authentic self and to grow that self into its full potential. The gift of learning to be herself and to love that self is worth every step taken on the journey. Our upcoming episodes will be about putting you and your life into this heroine's journey framework, using these signposts to help you see where you are and realize you are a heroine and to give you real life heroine examples of how the journey looks using different inspiring examples. 
We'll be touring the signposts of the journey sequentially to introduce you to them. Then we'll see where you think you are on the map right at this moment in your life and what that might mean for you. I don't think I've explained why I have a vested interest in proving to you that you are a heroine. There is a heroine in every woman, but we've forgotten it. Maybe we knew it when we were six or seven. Sadly, maybe some of us never knew it. But at one point, we were fearless and we were fine with who we are or who we were. But then we compared ourselves with others and found ourselves lacking and the covering up of who we really are began. This hasn't served us and hasn't served our world. So we'll be traveling the heroine's journey together so I can show you who you really are, a heroine, someone who matters, has a purpose, and has the courage to act on that purpose. Sure, it might be safer and a lot less risky to stay in your comfortable, ordinary life, but you'll find, along with the challenges, that there are helpers on the journey, synchronicities that will surely surprise you and ultimately divine support for you to be who you are. Joseph Campbell told us, if you take one step towards the gods, they will take 10 steps towards you. They are waiting. Now, let's take the journey. Oh, wait, one more thing. I could talk to you about personal growth and empowerment in ordinary terms. We could talk about you getting an intuitive hunch to do something and it causes you to leave your comfort zone and take some risks and go through hard times where you have to confront your inner demons and that teaches you some great lessons and you benefit and grow from it. That is indeed what we're talking about here. Instead, I'm using the language of the archetype, something that has been in our collective unconscious for centuries. So it evokes all kinds of deep transformational possibilities. This is the magic of the heroine's journey as a lens for seeing your life. It's not just a process for transformation. It's an ancient and current, think Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, story pattern first told to give women and girls a promise that there was something unique and special within them that deserved to be brought forth. It is the same now. In using the same milestones and language, we are invoking a powerful mythic structure that I believe actually works on us at some deeper level, at the same deeper level that poetry, music, and art impact us. As one of the students in my heroine's journey program said to me, working with the heroine's journey archetype helped me open up in a way that nothing else was able to do. It is a powerful magic carpet. Now, let's get on and fly.